In this video, we will see some of the details related to the Python data types. In the earlier videos, when we discussed about the variables, we already have seen some of the details related to the Python data types. Unlike the other programming languages, you need not to pre-declare the variables in Python. Depending on the type of the data that is assigned to variables, their data type will be decided. Python supports numerous data types to support storing variety of data. So like you can store the scalar data, you can store sequential data, you can store mapping type of data, you can even store the set type of data. In this video, we'll see what are the data types that support the scalar type of data storage in Python. So basically Python supports four different types of data types to support storage of scalar data. It supports int, float, complex and boolean data types to support storage of a single value. These scalar data types allows to store a single value. So we'll see some of the details related to the scalar data types in this video. Unlike other programming languages, Python do not require any advanced declaration of the variables. Directly depending on the value assigned to the variables, the type would be decided. Here, an integer value is assigned to the variable a, so the variable a is treated as an integer. And similarly here, a value 1.5 is stored in the variable b, so b is treated as a float type. And in this case, a string is assigned to the variable c, so the variable c is treated as a string type. So similarly here, a complex type is assigned to the variable d, so it is treated as a complex type of data. The type of the variable can be checked using the type method. So in Python, when you pass an object or the value or the variable to the type method, its type would be returned. Here you can check the type of the variable a is of type integer. In Python, all the data types are the classes, where the objects are the instances of those classes. And similarly, you can check the type of the other variables also. So if you observe, the type of the variable b is float as you are assigning a float type of data to the variable b. And similarly, the type of the variable c is a string as you are storing a string type of data to, to the variable c. And you can observe the type of the variable d is the complex type as an imaginary type of value is stored in the variable d. So that is how advanced declaration of the variables is not required in Python. So depending on the type of the value that is stored in the variable, the variable's type would be decided. And the type of any variable or the object or the value can be checked using the method type by passing the variable to the type method. Unlike other programming languages like C, C++, R, Java, the type of the variable is not fixed. That is in those programming languages, so if you declare a variable as an integer type, then you can store only integer type of data in that variable A. As Python is more flexible, the type of the variable can be changed during the execution time. That is Python data types are dynamic. So here if you observe, an integer value is stored in the variable A, so its type is treated as integer. Later on, when you store a float type of data to the variable A, so it's treated as a float type of data. And later on, here I'm storing a string content to the variable to the same variable a so it's treated as a string type of variable so that is how the type of the variable during the execution can be changed by assigning different type of data so initially here the variable a is treated as integer then later on it's treated as float then later on it's treated as string so depending on the type of the data the type of the variable can be changed during the execution time python supports three different data types to support storing of numerical type of data so it supports int, float and complex data types to store different types of numerical data. Now let's check few more details related to the integer data type. So here if you consider this example, an integer value is stored into the variable a, so it is treated as an integer. There is no restriction on the range of value that can be stored in an integer variable in Python. So you can store any large number and the size of the value that you can store in a Python integer variable is decided on the system's memory. Here you can observe, so you are storing a very large number in the variable A. So you can even store a negative number in the integer type of variables. So that is how uh, you can store integers in Python. Unlike other programming languages, Python supports different types of number systems, numerical data with different bases. So it supports decimal number system, it supports binary, octal and hexadecimal number systems also. Like whenever a whole number is stored without any prepending values, then that number is treated as a decimal number itself. Here if you observe 
A is assigned with the integer value 100. So A is treated as a number in the decimal number system. So you can check its type is integer. Whenever you are storing a whole number by prepending the symbol 0B or 0 capital B, then whatever the numbers that are followed by those symbols, they are treated as binary numbers. So here B stands for binary. So either the small b or the capital B can be used. So this stands for the binary number system. Whatever the number that is followed by these symbols, they are treated as binary numbers. And so the binary numbers are not directly stored in the variables. Instead, they will be converted to the decimal equivalents and then those values will be stored in the variables. Here, 100 0 0 is treated as binary number and its decimal equivalent is 4. So the variable is storing the value that is how when a whole number is prepending either 0B or 0 capital B, so those numbers are treated as binary representations and their decimal equivalents will be stored in the variables. So you can check here the type of A is integer in both these cases. Similarly, octal numbers can be represented by prepending the whole numbers with the symbols 0 small o or 0 capital O where O stands for octal number system. So here if you observe this number is prepending the symbol 0 small o. Whatever the number that is followed by these symbols they will be treated as octal numbers. So here if you observe so this 5 4 the digits that are followed by these symbols will be treated as octal numbers and their decimal equivalents will be stored in the variable a. So that is how a is getting the decimal number 44. So you can observe the type of the variable a is integer. So similar to the binary and the octal representations, Python also supports the representation of the hexadecimal numbers. The whole numbers that are prepended by the symbol 0 small x or 0 capital X, they are treated as hexadecimal numbers. So here in this assignment, the digit 7a are followed by the symbol 0x. So those numbers will be treated as hexadecimal numbers and their decimal equivalent will be stored in the variable a. So remember the hexadecimal number representation is not stored in these variables. In all these cases only the decimal numbers are stored in the integer variables. So like this Python supports numerical values with different bases. So it supports decimal numbers, octal numbers, binary numbers and even the hexadecimal numbers. But you need to understand one thing that the values that are stored in all these integer va variables are the decimal numbers only. So though you are representing the values in the binary octal or the hexadecimal numbers, their decimal number equivalents are stored in the integer variables. So that is how Python supports storage of integers with different bases. So now let's see how Python supports storage of floating type of data. Python supports storage of numbers with a fractional part. Here if you observe 3.4. So there is a fractional part in this number. So such numbers also can be stored and whenever you are storing such values to a variable, so those type of data is treated as float type of data and float is a class which represents a floating type of data. So you can even store the floating point numbers using the scientific notation. So consider this number 3e plus 7 which consists of both the mantissa part and the exponentiation part. So that is how Python supports storing of float type of data either by using the decimal point or by using the scientific notation. So you can even store the negative numbers. So here you can observe. So a negative number is stored using the scientific representation. So though you are storing the scientific notation, so the value you are storing is of type float. So its class is the float class. Floating point numbers in Python are accurate up to 15 digits after the decimal point. So consider this example where A is assigned with a floating point number and if you observe the value is accurate only up to 15 digits after this decimal point. So that is how in Python floating points are accurate up to 15 digits after the decimal point. So far we have seen how Python supports storing integer type and float type of data. So now let us see how Python supports the storage of imaginary numbers. So Python supports a special data type with the name complex class to store the imaginary type of data. Imaginary numbers are the numbers which contains both the real part and the imaginary part. So if you observe this number, so which contains the real part 3 and the imaginary part 4. So here J indicates the imaginary part. So this variable A indicates the complex type of data. So when you check the type of the variable A using the type method, it returns the class 
complex. So that is how you can store complex numbers also in Python. You need to observe while storing the complex numbers. So when the imaginary part coefficient is 1 also, in that case also, so that 1 should be accompanied. Otherwise, the number is considered as invalid. So that is how when you store this kind of 4 plus 1j, so you need to indicate that also 4 plus 1j. So now this is valid. But using this kind of uh, complex number is invalid in Python. So please make a note of that. Now let us see how Python supports storing various Boolean type of data. Python supports uh, a special class for storing Boolean type of data that is to store true and false values. So here I am assigning a true value to the variable a. If you check the type of a, so you can see it is treated as a bool class that is so this is belonging to the Boolean type of data. So Python provides bool class to support the Boolean data. So similarly you can even store the value false. So here if you observe so a false value is stored in the variable b. So if you check the type of the variable b so you can see it is also belonging to the bool type. So that is how Python supports Boolean type of data by providing a bool class. So far in this video we have seen various data types that supports the representation of the scalar data. That is scalar data is the data which allows us to store a single value. In case of the integer we are able to store the one integer value because these are the scalar data types. So we are able to store one and only one value. Even in case of the complex numbers also we are able to store one and only one value. So consider the boolean case here you are able to store either true or false. So in all these cases we are able to store a single value not multiple values. So python supports special data types to store collection type of data which allows us to store a collection of these elementary data values. So in the next video we will see the details of these collection data types. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.